refurbish and rejuvenate the cemetery. A lot of the tombstones had been knocked over and damaged. So he went in, found up, found chemicals in order to clean them, uprighted a lot of them, and also in the process he went through and did a log of all of the tombstones that are in that cemetery. Um, accepting on his behalf, and unfortunately he couldn't be here tonight, are Marianne Silvers, the president of the Tabernacle Historical Society, and Anne Franson, the secretary of the society. Great, terrific. Congratulations, and thank you for coming on this weekend. Congratulations. Get a picture of your club. Very good. All right. Perfect. Thanks, guys. The next award goes for um, the category Published History. It's to the Woodland Township Historical Society for their markers. They put in historical markers at 11 different sites throughout Woodland Township and created a walking tour for those sites. Uh, it can be found on their website. Uh, in the process of doing the research, they also incorporated children from the um, Chatsworth Elementary School. And it was all done through the efforts of their historical society, through donations, fundraisers, and a very small volunteer grant. Um, accepting on their behalf is their board. It is Deborah Grove is their president. Um, Carolyn Tice, the Vice President, Diane Sui, the Treasurer, and Charlene Delanoy, their Secretary.
questions. Thank you very much for your contributions. Here we go. We'll just all, uh, yeah, if you want to get up on this, that makes life easier. There we go. Perfect. Thanks. Great. There we go. Thank you. Stephanie Mark Sawyer, um, also in the category of published history, um, for her publication, Images of America and Mount Laurel. Uh, this was the latest publication relating to Mount Laurel's history. Prior to this, it wasn't done since 1976, uh, where she went through and interviewed several residents, did first person accounts, gathered photographs um, in order to gather all the information for in that book. Um, and on her behalf, we have the president of the Mount Laurel Historical Society, Fran Daly. Okay, um, at this point, what 
we'll move on to public comment. Um, this portion is for public comment on agenda items only. My name is Michelle Arnold, and I do have some questions and comments. I'd like to direct my comments to Freeholder Schwartz, if I may. And it's regarding item number 29 on the agenda this evening, and that has to do with a direct service agreement with Atlanta County and moving the female bikinis. Sorry, no, quite all right. Quite all right. So I have several questions, if you would be so kind. The $89.36 a day per detainee, is that a complete comparative cost? Are there medical costs in addition to that? Please tell me about transportation costs, if you would. My understanding, where's Mark Crossing? <coughs> Mark, this is all inclusive. You want to talk about the fee, the $89? Yeah, currently the, um, the $89 being uh, paid uh, I've been in Atlanta County uh, includes the housing of the female inmates, which is their, their food, the clothing that they uh, provide there, uh, the, the in-house medical care uh, that they would receive there, the various programs uh, that, uh, that uh, would be involved that they have at Atlanta County, similar to some of the ones that, that we have here. Um, uh, the outside uh, medical, uh, just as we face here in the county, it's, it's built separately, there's someone unfortunately has to go to the hospital. Um, in terms of the transportation, uh, our correctional officers will be providing that uh, transportation to the bank. And what do you anticipate the cost of that transportation to be? How many teams are going to be involved? How many vans? And are they available and adequately equipped at this time? You know, I'm not familiar with the terminology that's used with the jail, uh, but I know that uh, when I got the uh, cost structure uh, that um, when, um, when a, a warden um, you know, really fought for overall transportation, some of the things that the sheriff has done, it was already incorporated into our general uh, post budget for correction operations, not just specific to the, uh, to the email facility. So mm -hmm. those amounts are included in our overall budget, uh, but I'm not familiar with the terms I kind of made that up. I'm not sure if that's exactly what they call it, but my term and under my understanding would okay. be, you know, the number of times the, the transportation would have to be done. Is that on a 24-hour basis? Or when you had, we had this discussion at a conference. Warden in the back, you had mentioned that there would be two, basically two runs a day. Okay. The six, the, how many runs, transport runs, would be back and forth between the Atlanta County and day? I thought you said two. Could you tell us the times and what those run? That's there will be a run in the morning, 6 a.m., and then a return run immediately. And is that five days a week or seven days a week? Five days a week. And what happens to the females in the meantime? What about holding in the main jail? Is there a capacity for that? My understanding, and again, I'm going to defer to the warden on this, but that they're not going to be held in the main jail for very long. That you reconstructed an area that's not to be go ahead. holding cells in the moving area that we have specifically designated for the females, and they'll be uh, not housed at the jail, they'll only be transported to the But they'll be processed initially out of the jail by our correction staff, correct? Correct. And what capacity do you have in the holding for the for the females there? Because if you're telling me that the runs are two days a week for five days, then it's possible that you're holding females there from Friday until Monday. No, you want to do it more than twice a day. So she's, you get, I'm she's sorry. wondering if somebody's arrested on the weekend. Oh well, yes. No, I'm sorry. We will run. Who commits on weekends? So then, seven days a week, not yes, five days a week. Okay. But this, is that the, the twice a day runs are for if they have to come back to for what for court or? And so, warden, are the weekends as needed if we have new inmates coming in? Is that how that's going to work? Yes. Okay. Only we have to use this. And then the other five days, I guess the regular work week, that's also to bring people back. We need to meet with their counsel. 
console and that sort of thing? Yes. And then if it's twice a day, 6 a.m., and then what's the return time? Do you know what the return time is? When the courts are done. Okay. Um, big question here for me is are there going to be any layoffs with the closing of the facility for the winter? I'm <coughs> sure and that there will be no layoffs, but I'd like for Mark and for the rest of the freeholders to just say that publicly so everybody knows this plan has no plans for layoffs. It, exactly. Um, you know, we were very, very sensitive to the needs of, uh, of our existing correctional officers who were doing a very, very good job for us uh, at that facility. And, um, and many correctional officers have already uh, uh, been applying and have retired. So uh, the Freeport Board elected uh, to not implement any layoffs uh, and just wait for natural uh, attrition to, to take effect uh, to get the requisite numbers. So there are no layoffs at all contemplated at this point. Okay. Is this then going to ease up the, um, the staffing at the main jail and allow some of the officers to have their days off that they've earned and worked for? I will uh, no. look at our oh, board for that. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Because until now, it's been very difficult for them to get a day off, and they've been told in order to get a day off that they have to submit a paid receipt for the warden's approval before they would get a day off. And to me, that is absolutely just beyond, just beyond my comprehension for somebody to have to be dealt into that personally in order to get a day off that they've earned and they've worked for. So that's my personal feeling on that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great. Um, is there anyone else who has a comment on the agenda item? Okay. Seeing none. Is there a sign in the agenda? Yes, there is right up here. Thank you. Thank you. Do you need to sign in? Just like that, I'm going Daniel Rosenberg, I'm an attorney here in uh, Holly. I represent uh, the Union 249 Correction Officers. I would like to be heard with regard to the closing of the female facility. Um, I'm sorry? I said that's an agenda item. So um, I did, uh, I, I, initially I heard uh, um, Madam Schwartz indicate that uh, there would be no contemplated layoffs, and she wanted a representation of all three holders if that was in fact the case. Is that in fact the case? Yes, that's our understanding. No. Layoffs. Not your understanding. What I'm asking you specifically is, is that the intention of the board not to lay off anyone? That's that's right. Right. I think that's the intention of the board, yes. and it's also laid out in the memo that was presented to us by the board. And I know that um, Creole Schwartz uh, was very adamant about the fact that she was not interested in uh, moving forward with this proposal and this motion tonight uh, as one of her agenda items if there were proposed layoffs. So, uh, we, we had made very clear to us in our conference section, and then uh, as Mr. Kratz just indicated again, <coughs> perhaps the warden can confirm that there are uh, no layoffs with this plan. Is there? Yes, yeah. there's no layoffs with this plan. And I'll be, uh, the staffing is for the for nutrition. And my understanding is that the staff <coughs> that are presently at the women's prison will be transferred to the main prison, and that in fact you'll be able to have additional sort of flush out the shortages that you may now have in the prison, which would hopefully address your issue of applications. Yes, is that correct? Yes, so that we'll be able to loosen up a few time for people to take the vacations now that is going into effect June 15th. Yes, So um, there's approximately 30 or so officers over at minimum. How is um, <coughs> jail intending on uh, transferring those hours, those shifts, and how will that take effect? We're going to understand that's June 15th. You want to address that? We'll stay up in um, The 30 officers over at minimum, yes. they're going to they're going to remain employed because we're yes. not going to lay anyone off. That's, that's correct. correct. So when they get transferred over to the main jail, how is that going to be implemented? Is there a plan? Who's going to be moved from one shift to another? Is that something it's worth? It's going to be balanced out. We have enough people. One of the concerns that the union has is, while no one will be laid off, we've got these 30 officers who are working, you know, the same days as the main jail. We've effectively got 30 officers without shifts. 
unless we're going to be adding those officers on to additional shifts in Grand Street. They're, they're all going to be on Grand Street. Understood. So can you say that? I they're all going to work. They're all going to be on they're Grand Street. They're all going to be working on Grand Street. Right. Shift. So uh, are we effectively having 30 more shifts added to the jail? No, they're all going to be on their way too. So is it, sir? Is my question clear? Or my, is I, I may not be clear enough. One of my concerns is, you know, in six A to six P, there's a number of employees both at minimum and both at Grant Street. So on June 15th or June 16th, whatever the first day is, those officers who are on six A to six P in minimum, they're going to be working at Grant Street. Right. Same shift. All right. So we're going to have effectively double the officers or somewhere in that line. So I, I guess my point is if for the sake of argument there's 10 officers at minimum working today 6A to 6P, on June 15th those <coughs> officers are going to be working in Grand Street That's on that day. Yeah if, we, yeah, if we have 30 at that time, we are treating a number of officers. I'm sorry? We are treating a number of officers. Trimming. Separations. Got you. So, um, everyone at minimum who needs a job, who isn't retired, who isn't terminated, or whatever case might be, they're going to be working and they're not going to be receiving additional days off. That's my understanding. Okay. And that was something that was discussed. What do you mean additional days What I mean is, um, again, there's 10 at minimum, let's say two retire. So now we've got eight extra officers. What the union's concerned with is those eight officers are not going to have a shift on the 15th or the 16th. They're going to be worked into the schedule. And if they're working... No, they're going to have a shift. If they, so if they're scheduled 6A to 6B, they're going to work 6A to 6B. If they're scheduled 6B to 6A, and then with the, whatever the collective bargaining agreement calls for in terms of rotation of the shifts, we're, that's what we fully intend to do. So, so one of the questions I asked in conference was whether uh, our officers that are being moved over will have the same hours and you know the same opportunity to work and, and I was assured that yes that is the case. Is that what's happening now? Yeah and no one's moving from their platoons or their working out. That's not so entirely accurate. We'll have someone speak to that. From the 15th on no one's Certainly. I'm not sure how union seniority works but will um, and I did not ask this question in conference but I'm just wondering now if someone has union seniority who's coming over, can they bump somebody out of it to a different shift? No, they're going to remain on the same platoon as they are now. So everyone, everyone's coming over. So they're going to be one system. day at the one facility, the next day they're coming over, if they're on shift that next day, they'll start immediately on the same shift in the new building. Right. Okay. Um, no are there, are there, is there any input that the union has in the transition? Specifically, um, the officers are the boots on the ground, and they're most probably most aware of what the issues are, what the problems are, and where additional officers, officers are needed, because additional officers are certainly needed at Grand Street. So will the union president, state delegate, or any other representative be able to participate in the transition planning? Well, I think we're always open to listening to our partners, our employee partners. Is the, the state delegates present here, the union president is away and available by phone. Is there going to be a time, a date, a meeting where he can meet, they can meet with the freeholder board? Well, I think it's more appropriate that they meet with staff. Um, and I, I would welcome that. I welcome a letter from them suggesting any suggestions that they may have for the transition plan. And I would try to word it if appropriate to meet with them and see what they can help them. So uh, what, I, what I'd love to hear from the warden is that, yeah, there'll be a meeting with the state delegate, state president, and they can voice their opinion as to what would be the most appropriate way to transition over. Yeah, we've um, council on that. You're already planning for a meeting? Yeah. Okay. With, the, with the union? With the union. Okay, so okay. Mr. Rosenberg, we'll be reaching out to you tomorrow. All right, even better. No, but additionally, I just want to voice to the freeholder board that um, the officers are extremely concerned, obviously, with layoffs. Um, but first and foremost, they're most concerned with um, their safety and the safety of their fellow officers and that they're adequately staffed. That's a concern that 
um, can't be voiced loud enough, and I sincerely hope the board hears. Um, but also, I really would uh, hope that the representations made by all of you that there are no layoffs um, will ring true. Even the, um, and, and it may seem like a minor detail, but those shifts, so those people coming over from minimum, they aren't going to have any lag in time. Because effectively, one of the concerns we have is that even though they're not fired, if they're off for two, three, five, ten days, while we are trying to figure it out, we're not going to clear. That's real. I think we answered that. I think we answered that. I'm sorry? We've answered that. I understand. There's no question pending. I'm just trying to impress upon you the significance. Thank you. As you get you wing our reassurance. Yes. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Thanks. Okay, anyone else? Public comment with regard to agenda item. Okay. With that, uh, we'll move on to our resolutions. Uh, before I move my items, I'd like to invite Ralph Shaw to come up and speak to us. He's the chairman of the Burlington County Library. Also support eight member libraries. 
um, and I'm going to leave everything there, but the total is about 150, 160,000, not including the computers that we provide and uh, backup on the technology. Um, and that brings me to the biggest nut in, in our budget, which is um, technology and branch facility improvements. Um, and we've asked, we've asked, this is really a capital investment. We're going a lot of places with this, and frankly, some of it came up uh, after we originally um, hammered out our budget. Right now, we are, we are on the verge of really working out a great deal with, with Nishan. They've agreed to make considerable alteration to their building. We've already contracted with an architect to handle that, and of course, we would pay for uh, the improvements that would be that would involve uh, computers and equipment. What have you? Uh, the reason we've targeted that branch is outside of the main branch. That's our heaviest traffic. Um, Cinnamon branch. We're still working with them. We'd like to do a similar arrangement there because they have the heaviest computers in the county. By the way, we've got more stats than, than we can imagine. So. It's Based on what I'm relying on here. And then finally, a pine lands branch. I'm looking at the out years now. I mean, at some point, we are going to have to pay our 25% cost share. I know it's a popular topic for you to walk out back. Um, and um, and uh, they, right now, they, they haven't decided exactly what they want to do. So, but when the time comes, we will do that. Of course, we, we, will, we will have to uh, provide more equipment for that. And then, um, most recently, I was given a list of, uh, from uh, information technology here. They had a consultant come in, gave us a list of 1.9 million in, in what they say are upgrades and improvements. Now, having said that, um, and, I, and I know somebody's going to back in my head, I don't, I don't think all that 1.9 million is necessary. And I think, and, and I am not, I'm the last guy you'd want to call to with the wire computer or uh, but, but we, we really want to see if we can pare that down. We also believe um, that it can be pared down further through um, E-rate, which is, which is kind of a uh, discount for, for government. Um, how, however, um, not everything on that list can, can be bonded. I, mean, that's, I was told, you know, if you bond it, you'll find a way to afford it. What happened? Um, PCs have five or seven months of your life. You know, there's no way we can so this is this is kind of like like where we're at, um, and I think it's I think it's forward looking in the sense that it does poise us to have um, next year, have next couple of years to do very very well and accomplish some important goals. Um, I hope we'll approve it. And if you have questions, please. budget has already been approved by the um, library board and we're just approving it at this point. Is that right? The commission has approved it. Okay. 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 Yeah. Any other questions? Just a, a quick one. <clears throat> Morristown Mall, the kiosk you guys put in there, is that something that you're in these budgets you're looking to expand into other places? Well, or is that actually, yeah, we were, um, the center said, we put one there if we want to pay rent. I mean, they said that's an attraction. We would consider doing that if we're trying to something actually talked about. And the usage of that is starting to but we've done a little bit of job with that. Very good. Thank you very, very much, Rob. Good job, sir. Yes. Okay, with that, I'd like to make a motion uh, to approve item I-2 by roll, roll, roll call vote. Do I have a second? A second, then. Uh, however, there would be a modest 
uh, tax increase of less than $15 per average household. But that budget failed. Uh, tonight, um, we, re we requested the uh, Chief Financial Officer uh, to provide us with a budget that held the line on taxes. But um, unfortunately, we uh, also have um, layoffs and poor furloughs. Uh, but that too failed to reach a consensus uh, amongst uh, both our Republican and Democrat members. Uh, so we're not supportive of uh, such uh, staff reductions. Um, however, at this time, you know, we are required to go forward with a budget. Uh, we must introduce it because our county services and programs you know, count on us. To, for these services and programs to continue. Many of our county services are very much relied on by our county residents, uh, specifically our Meals on Wheels, our Homelessness Prevention, our Workforce Development Initiative, our Animal Shelter. They all depend uh, on our ability to come forward with a budget. So tonight, uh, we vote to introduce the same budget that's been on our public agenda for the prior two meetings. And it ensures that all of our services and our current staffing levels are maintained. It increases the tax levy, but it is less than the 2% cap. So if I'd like to motion that uh, we have a roll call vote. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Three Holder Donnelly. Gina, would you kindly call the roll? Three Holder Belgard. Yes. Three Holder Donnelly. Yes. Three Holder Gargano. Yes. Three Holder Schwartz. No. Director O'Brien. Yes. Are there any questions at this point? I'd like to make a motion that we approve resolutions I-1 and I-4 through I-15 by unanimous consent. Second. Second by the Board of Guardian. Are there any questions? I have some questions. Ah, here Surprise. we go. <laughs> uh, on I-1, Mr. Troy, tell yes. me when you're ready. I'm ready. Okay, on the bill list, page 15. Camden County College, I need to recuse myself. Page 46 and 47, uh, Lippin Cotton Jacobs. There's a uh, charge there for various capital improvements, $10,636.76. Can you tell me what that is for? Um, this is uh, engineers for just various capital improvements to the building for professional services. To this building? Yes. Is that relating to the, uh, the work that's currently being I don't have it in front of me, but the amount sounds like the plus of the boring for one of the towers. I'm sorry. I, I, was, I looked on my own pitch. I got a job. Uh, this is design services on uh, replacement bridge CR 98 in Bedford Township. I flipped my pitch too fast. So we just went from Mount Holly to Cinnamon to Mitchell? That's, <laughs> okay, that's got it. the way, that's the way, because the total's on the opposite page, <laughs> and my title is on this side. Okay. Uh, and then my other question is page 74, Taylor Wiseman Taylor, uh, engineer, design task order for $17,970. Can you tell me what that's for? This is also an engineering. This is for uh, bridges C4-4, C4-2. Uh, it's the center bridge over at Cocos Creek, and the other one is the water highway over uh, Mason's Creek. Okay. That is all I have on I-1. Um, I did have a question with regard to I-10, the authorization to purchase office furniture. Uh, I don't know who I can reference to. I'll do. Okay. So is this furniture for uh, relating to the renovations that we're having done for all of the uh, It is. It's for the, the hearing room area and like the conference room? Yes. Yes. It's 
not just specific furniture, it's for furnishing of everything to do with the renovation. Okay. All right. I have some, are you done? I have some more to say. Um, let me check. Yes, that's all I have for today. Okay, I have some questions. Um, I did an analysis of the expenditures <clears throat> year to date, January, February, March, April, and May. Um, I came up with for the five months six hundred six nine six comma six two nine point four eight in overtime. I analyzed that and I got one point or almost one point four million dollars in overtime. What I looked at were if there were peaks and valleys. I found that there was consistent overtime in the Department of Communications, um, in the Highway Department, and in Building and Grounds. Those are the biggies that, have, that stood out to me. And I understand we had to do snow removal, et cetera. However, I think that if a number of these positions were converted to regular full-time jobs, we would be able to give our county employees more work, because we do have a high unemployment rate, and we would also be able to reduce the overtime. Because as a lot of you know, overtime costs more than straight time, even with benefits. So um, I would like us to please take a close look at that. We need to knock down the overtime and where possible. I want to see those, some of those positions, um, some of that time converted into full-time positions so that we can give our county residents jobs. I also have a question on page 17. It says contingent. Um, what is that contingent fund for? Looks like three thousand dollars in January, two thousand dollars in February, thousand dollars in May. What is that contingent fund? <clears throat> I assume that's a what if fund, but what is it for? I, I don't know where you are. Page seventeen on the um, expenditures. What's it that you're looking at? Page seventeen was in our pack of expenditures. Yeah, we'll look at and down in the middle it says contingent. <clears throat> I don't get back to me. I don't know why it's listing out some contingent. Okay. Okay. Thanks. And that's all the questions I have on that.
And also, this is a reduction in the rate we originally negotiated? Initially, um, so we were at a higher rate, uh, and uh, Washer County went to uh, other counties that were uh, uh, housing their inmates. Uh, forced a, a uh, much lower rate, and the county road, unfortunately, uh, was required to meet that rate, otherwise we would no longer receive any, any, any of those inmates. And my understanding is they were sending inmates that we thought we were going to get to other facilities as a result of this? That, that is correct. And we hope now to gain back? We have had them back for, for, for quite some time after we modified the, the, uh, the, the, the agreement with them. Okay. Thank you. Second. Okay. Uh, motion by um, Schwartz, second by Gargano. Um, any questions? Uh, I, I do just want to clarify a couple more things on I-29. I know we talked about the, uh, the staffing and the fact that there will be no layoffs. I also want to clarify that uh, with um, the transport of these prisoners, female prisoners, to Atlanta County, they're going to be receiving the same quality of care uh, one of the things we discussed was uh, methadone treatment that, they said that some inmates receive here in Burlington County. That will be available, my understanding is, on site in Atlantic County. Yes. Uh, there will be treatment for pregnant inmates in Atlantic County, and apparently they have, um, uh, Wharton and correct me if I'm wrong, just, uh, I think you had said that they have a, a very good clinic right on, yes, uh, right on the facility. And uh, we'll also be utilizing um, uh, for court appearances, video conferencing, and, and the like where available. Yes, that's correct. And also that we have talked in conference that um, various parties who will be impacted by this will be notified. Uh, we have been working with outside counsel 
Uh, we have uh, presented a recommendation that we take them through a JCPNL existing utility easement, uh, which they're objecting to uh, with regards to it involving preserved farmland. That is a point of contention we do not agree with. Uh, and there are other routes, you know, other uh, issues relevant to the route, how far they would be. We want, we want them against the, the right of way. They don't want to be against the right of way. They want to go down the middle of the road. So we have, though we've been working with them, trying to come up with a route that would be palatable to, to everyone, uh, they have not uh, cooperated to the fullest extent. And as I said, presently we're standing in objection. Can I ask you to meet with uh, our engineer, our county engineer, Joe Berkeley, uh, right after the meeting. And please advise him of your individual concerns with, about your, uh, concerning your individual properties and, and just anything that you want to um, mention so that when he's, Mr. Berkeley's in these meetings, that he knows fully uh, you know, about what, uh, how this pipeline would specifically affect you individually. Well, at this point in time, um, Chesterfield Township has a resolution proposing that. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Yes, sir. Um, Antoinette um, owns the Chesterfield Inn. As we understand it, it's a minimum of 26 weeks to a year that we will not have access to that road. I have a business also in the township, but also I can speak for a lot of the people. We have a petition and we're getting more signatures all the time. <coughs> so well, we help. The, 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 one, the one thing I think if you, if you listen to what Mr. Berkey was saying is that we're not signed off on this thing and we're not getting the information either. Okay. So, I mean, I think when this originally happened, we were in the process of having that conversation with them and they decided to walk away and, and file at the BPU. So, we're in the process of trying to pull as much information out of them also. <clears throat> they gave us a map and the map had a route on it, but there's no streets. I mean, you know, the whole thing's like a jam chop. It just doesn't make sense. Well, I mean, that's a primary reason why we object. Well, yeah, yeah. object There's no plan at this point. At least the, they haven't given it to us either. So well, I think we're the same. Just saying, you know, and then I heard that they uh, filed with this, this board, the, the public service <laughs> the board. BPO, yes. And they asked, the, they're supposed to be 100 feet from the houses, and they wanted to change it to 50 feet. Now, why would you change something from 100 feet to 50 feet? I mean, it's a 30 inch high pressure line. I mean, you know, and there's no way you can go down 528 and not be within 50 feet of all the houses. They're all on the road. And, and the other thing that and you just brought it up, if we're looking at road closures of two years, I mean, that's something have, that we don't have, an we don't have anything. Detour. Yeah. So we, don't have all our, we don't have all our routes. We don't have all our routes. That is one of the reasons we're objecting. The hundred percent objection. We're with you. I mean, yeah. My question to you guys is, like, how much power do you have with this board? You remember the water company? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's all that happened there? No. Yeah. We lost. Okay. I mean, it, we're not done. That's at least a voice. Yeah, we're a voice. We're an advocate. But in terms of actually having influence over that entity, no. BPU is going to make the final decision. Okay. And, and Who has influence over the BPU? Uh, we're getting signatures from the community. They become, yeah, but keep in mind, they, they become autonomous. They're a gubernatorial appointment. They're a gubernatorial appointment, yes. So the governor appoints those folks, but they are pretty much autonomous once they're appointed. But it is a county road. Yeah. Oh, oh, that doesn't matter. So what the, what I'm asking you, you know, is that you Trump, can come out Trump and us. We can comment and we can push object. and, and we, we can object. Litigate. But we we also a few years back objected American Water and went in there and we went up to a VP meeting and we had I guess a busload or two of people go up to complain about the water. We had like ten thousand people on a signature and they decided to vote before they even heard us. So BPU is its own little entity. So they can run businesses in the council. We we we're not defending the BPU. What we're, what we're saying is that we're going to do everything we can through this process to make sure if, it's, if this goes forward, it's going to be done right. And But ultimately, it's not a decision that we make as this board. You, you mentioned you can litigate. How long can we delay it that way? That's not the point of litigation. Right. Uh, it's not. I, I can't even answer that. We don't have a plan we're litigate. Yet. We're going to litigate for a reason. Yeah. We have to get an adjudication on the floor. If, if there's a plan that comes out and there's a safety issue or something, that's something you can look at. But if, with right now, I don't think we have enough 
information to even make a call that says the player's good, bad, or indifferent. They have a drawing that doesn't have streets on it. Wow. Well, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I, I mean, that's what that's what we're getting at this point. With no streets on it, it shows a route. And, and, I, and I think what, what our engineering department is doing is, is they're pushing them for that information to move forward so at least we can make a decision on what's good and what's better. What is the thing with the uh, going through the, the, the farmland that's preserved? Well, I, I, the, way, the way that I understand it is they're using the New Jersey natural gas is using the DEP exception to not utilize the preserved farmland. And MP, are you in the room? Can you help me? Um, <laughs> yes, there there is a provision in the law that we operate the farmland preservation program under that allows the government the governor to lift the deed of easement under certain circumstances, and it's transportation, water and sewer, public facilities necessary for public safety, health, and welfare. It does not mention explicitly utilities so everyone's trying to figure that out well there is an exception with this it does impact public safety because the possibility of methane leaking into an explosion on the one of our rescue squad where they can't get the people the fire departments so that is a good exception all right but we're, we're not arguing you that point we've raised that kind of just explaining to you the way the statute we're not arguing okay. But would the um, freeholders eventually have a decision to say come out against it? To, to well, we have an objection filed right now. We can do it. Okay. That's what Mr. Brickley explained earlier. We filed an objection to the plan. And, and we're going to review it. We need to do it. I would go to every meeting that I could attend. Uh, I think you should definitely, you know, speak with Mr. Berkeley afterward. Make sure he has your names and your addresses so he can also, you know, represent your specific interests in that. And just keep fighting every day. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Uh, hi. Hi. Uh, Lena Smith. Lena Smith, mm -hmm. and what town are you from? Uh, I'm actually with Food and Water Watch, and we're a national advocacy organization. We champion clean water and safe food, and I'm here regarding the pipeline as well. I want to commend you for filing these interventions with the BPU. Um, uh, and it's a good step to protect the county residents and the taxpayers the environment uh, during the construction phase, but we also want to note the concerns that pipelines go beyond development, like they mentioned the hazards of explosion. Um, between 2010 and 2015, there were 3,141 pipeline explosions, leaks or spills, uh, injuring 369 people and killing 78. So the pipeline in not just uh, doesn't just need a new route, it needs to be stopped. Um, so I've brought for you uh, resolutions to look at, and we would ask that you would consider passing a resolution to oppose these pipelines, as well as knowing that the pipeline sits in Burlington County and the freeholders appoint the commissioner to the Pinelands Commission, and the pipelines is being used to construct pipelines through, um, if you would also consider um, advocating to stop pipelines through the pipelines as well. So, Thank you. Well, I have a question for you. Yes, sir. You come from a lobbying organization. Uh, we're an advocacy You're organization. You're a lobbyist, too. Like grassroots advocacy. What type of work have you started with the BPU to prevent this? We are primarily pressuring the Pinelands Commission right now uh, because they're more movable than the BPU. But the Pinelands Commission doesn't decide <coughs> the issues that these folks right. just because what I'm seeing. Here. So what is your organization going to do? We're going to do. We will, uh, there's a public comment period, if I'm correct, and we'll generate public comment. Um, I think we all know that they're an independent agency and are ultimately the decision makers on this. So, yeah. And they're not elected officials, they're appointed by the government. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Any other public comments? 
Topic of having our meetings go on the road. Um, we're sorry. We're just, you know, we're saying we are going to hopefully have our next meeting someplace other. I didn't it's say our next meeting. It's a complicated <laughs> process, but we are looking at it. We so. have Washington Township that has offered us to do. I didn't know that. But they I, have the mayor. Okay, I will, I'm making a note right now. And I think Bruce and I would like some folks who live from Bordentown City. We've been there before. We think welcome us back. Or is that city, city? And Washington, Washington. Now, I was suggested Southampton, but I don't push that. I think that's a nice oh, little Come on. So, we, I I mean, yeah, it's really important that we get these meetings out of the crowd. That's it. Thank you very much. Director um, Donnelly. Thank you, Director. This Saturday, the county holds on the actual date of Memorial Day, May 30th, its annual. Memorial Day ceremony was held in Bremerton Township Veterans Park. Um, it's a very nice ceremony. It was held precisely at noon at that park and at several other facilities throughout the United States and for that matter throughout the world. So if you're available Saturday, I encourage you to Bremerton Township uh, at the municipal complex. It's a fantastic Memorial Day recognition ceremony. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
I would recommend that you go full blow with the PPO. I mean, it's a matter of letter writing, emails, everything you can do, because ultimately, that pipeline, that's where that decision will be made. You know, we can play and deal with the gas company, and they're going to turn around, and they're going to tell you what you want to hear. But ultimately, they're going to have a plan, they're going to take it to the PPO, and they're going to ask for the approvals from them. So I would recommend that the, if the fight is going to start, that's where it has to start immediately and not, and not waste time with a lot of the other things, but go. I mean, we'll, we'll be dealing with the gas company, we'll be dealing with those issues, but the BPU is where the pressure has to land. No, I know. I'm talking, I'm talking about the one we're looking up in going to Chesterfield. That one right there is going to go forward from the BPU. And that would be it. Thank you. And uh, I would like to thank everyone for coming out tonight. We really do appreciate um, seeing you and, and hearing your comments and concerns. And uh, with that, I would like to uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So, um, motion by Three Hundred Dollars. Second. Second by Three.